Good morning and welcome to this broadcast for Benham Baptist Church of Elkin, North Carolina. I'm Pastor Joe Souther and I certainly welcome you uh, as you have joined in with us to be a part of our service this morning. I want to talk today about the value of contentment and I hope it will help us in the times that we're living in. If you have your Bible handy, I would like to invite you to Open it to the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. And then once you have located that passage, uh, flip over to 1 Timothy, uh, chapter 6. And we will look at uh, some verses of Scripture in each of those passages in just a, a, a few minutes. Uh, first, let me lead us in a word of prayer, and then we'll get underway with our lesson for today. Lord Jesus, thank you for this beautiful Sunday and for your blessings in our lives. Thank you for the week past as you have provided for us in your wonderful way of doing so. I pray that you will bless our time together this morning. Open our hearts and give us uh, a word from above that will be helpful and of great strength to all of the wonderful people who are watching this program today. We'll give you thanks and praise for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Near the conclusion of last week's message, I referred to Paul's words to Timothy about con contentment. And it just seemed that the Lord continued to keep that thought on my heart all uh, week, this past week. And so I want us to look at contentment this morning, talk about the value of contentment. And I want to explore that in light of our present situation and the restrictions that we all are living under. It's pretty hard, I'm sure, for most of us to be content these days because we've got a lot of things that we are accustomed to normally doing. We want to get out, we want to go. Certainly, we want to go to church. I really, really miss that, and I'm looking forward to being able to get back to church. And it's been hard for me to be content and not be able to go to church on Sunday. I really miss that, and it kind of messes up my week and gets my days out of order. And, uh, you know, I've had to adjust all of that, as I'm sure that you have. However, every child of God should find it easy to be contented. When you think about uh, what God has done for us, uh, we should find it easy to be contented. We are so blessed. We know our Heavenly Father loves us for we experience that love each and every day that we live. We're not without direction in our daily lives because we have the Holy Spirit to guide us according to Romans 8:26. And the Comforter did come, just as Jesus promised, and He abides within our hearts. And He guides us as we yield to His leadership each and every day. We can easily communicate with our Lord through the medium of prayer. So we're not shut out from Him. We can talk to Him any moment of the day, any hour of the night. We are always able to communicate directly with our Heavenly Father. What a blessing! That's a very special thing. We are blessed with the assurance of eternal life. After this life is over, we know that we will live with the Lord as one of His children, and we will be able to enjoy the place that He has gone to prepare for us on the other side. But while we live here, we also know that our Lord will supply all of our need according to His riches and glory, just like Paul uh, said to the Corinthian church in Philippians, or rather I should say the Philippian church in Philippians 4, uh, verse number 19. What more then could we ask for? Why is there always that longing within most of our hearts, mine included? We have that longing for something that maybe we think that we need more than what we have. And we lose sight of these blessings that I was just talking about and all of, of the provisions that the Lord has made for us. And we have that longing for more. No wonder there's a lack of fulfillment in the lives of many Christian people these days. 
sadly, not many really do grow to experience contentment in their lives each and every day. Mankind is not included, but Agur, the author of Proverbs chapter 30, that one particular chapter, names four things which never say it is enough in verses 15 and 16. And those four things are the grave, the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire. Whenever I meditate on that, and as I have meditated on that, I've come to believe, uh, and my meditation leads me to believe, that people who know the Lord and have their faith and trust anchored in Him should be able and can develop a higher degree of contentment. I believe the Lord wishes for us to develop a higher level of contentment in uh, our lives. Over the course of my life, I've been really, really blessed, as you hear me say almost every week in many different ways, and I want to give God glory for that, but I've been blessed to know a lot of people in my lifetime. But as I think back over the multitudes of people, just reflecting on different people that I have known over the course of my life, I find it difficult to pick out those who truly demonstrate consistently that they are contented in their life. Most people seem to experience a little bit of uh, discontentment, and I'm no different. Uh, I think most people are like me, guilty of expressing too much discontentment, and I really want the Lord to forgive me of that, and I pray that uh, the Lord will help me to be more contented in the future. I've really tried to work hard, especially of late, on being much more content. As I think back over all the people, or many of the people that I've known, obviously I can't think of all of them at one time, but there are a couple of people that stand out to me that lived in the neighborhood where I grew up, and they were a couple of ladies that lived by themselves, they didn't have all the things that maybe many of the rest of us had. They didn't even have electricity in their home. Uh, but they, they didn't have an automobile. They didn't drive. They depended on other people to take them wherever they needed to go. But uh, whenever I was around them, they seemed to me to be content with the lives that they were living. I don't know why, but as a young boy, that stood out to me. And now as uh, a, a man of age, I still reflect on that. And I think about the impact that those two had on my young life at that point, being so content with the things that they were blessed with. I ask myself, why can't I think of more people? Of all those that I know and have known over the course of my life, many of them already gone on to be with the Lord. Why can't I think of strong demonstrations of contentment? Those two stick out to me as being very, very special. The truth is hard to acknowledge, isn't it? When we ask ourselves, well, who around us is content? And do I exhibit or demonstrate through my own actions that I'm a person who is contented? There are so many discontented people around us, and today we hear the buzz of people saying, well, if I had, and then there's a blank, you know, you can fill in that blank with whatever you want to fill it in with. If I had a million dollars, or if I had the opportunity to do this, uh, so on and so forth. And then we find on the heels of that sometimes that we hear an expression once Say, for example, the desire is fulfilled that some, someone will often say, well, if I'd have known I was going to get that, I would have asked for more. Or if I would have known that I could have done that, then I would have gone further and I would have done more in the process of time. Seemingly the expression suggesting then that we're still not content even though a desire might have been fulfilled. 
What then is contentment as it relates to where I'm at today, thinking about our present situation and the things that we're having to deal with, with the coronavirus, the restrictions that we're living under and those kinds of things. And many are wanting to see those restrictions lifted and so forth. And uh, there's a growing discontentment that seems to exist in uh, our society these days. What then is contentment in its simplest form for us? What do we need to take away from this lesson here today? In its simplest form, it is being, that is, contentment is being in a restful state so as to experience satisfaction of mind. And don't confuse that with complacency because we're not talking about a self-satisfaction that uh, makes one complacent. That's not the point. The point is that we have a restful spirit within us and therefore our mind is at peace. It is satisfied with uh, present circumstances and present situations in our lives. I guess I would try to put it in these kind of terms to summarize it to help us it is an emotional state of mind occurring through the marvelous grace of God where present circumstances, no matter whether they're good or whether they're bad, are not all-consuming. We just rest in the peace of mind of knowing that we're in the hand of the Lord and He will provide through the sufficiency of His grace for each and every one of us. When we do uh, that, and we rest in the Lord, then uh, a lifestyle is developed out of that where certain things occur. Like, for example, anxiety is minimized. And the Lord Jesus talked about that in uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, verse 34, for example. He said, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? And then in verse 34, as we skip over to that, he said, Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. When we develop a lifestyle of contentment, there's no grumbling and complaining because there is a perception of lack in our lives. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10.10 10, that we should not murmur. He told the Corinthian church, he said, do not murmur. In the context of that particular passage as he was speaking to them in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, he was talking about things that should not be a part of a believer's life. And he actually mentioned five things there that should not be a part of a believer's life. And one of those was that there should be no murmuring in a believer's life. The real essence of contentment is captured when one recognizes a couple of things. For example, number one, that God in grace su sufficiently provides. He always has and He always will. Paul told the Corinthian Christians, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. The second thing is that experience teaches us that we should be content always as we live our life for the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said to the Philippians, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 11. Those are very, very powerful words there. And so experience teaches us to be content. And we have knowledge of knowing that God in grace will sufficiently provide. Those two things are uh, evidences that will come forth whenever the real essence of contentment is captured in a person's life. I believe real happiness is only discovered when there is a foundation of contentment in our lives. 
So I would call that an essential value that we have uh, uh, or should have in our lives each day. Now, I want us to note some things of great value associated with contentment, and I'll give them to you real quickly. Number one, which takes us to one of our text verses, and that is 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 6. Paul said, But godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. You see, contentment gives evidence of a transformed life. Others are able to see that our life has been transformed whenever we are demonstrating a spirit of contentment, no matter what the circumstances are that we find ourselves in. Righteousness and godliness in a transformed life replace the old sinful nature that formerly was there. Personal desires and actions radiate that change and we exhibit a disposition, a, a disposition outward uh, that helps others to recognize that we have had that inward change that has taken place in our lives. And we also demonstrate the fact that the longing of our heart or the longings of our soul are satisfied in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, that's why Paul said with great authority here, godliness with contentment is great gain. The second verse that I called your attention to was Hebrews chapter 13. And let's look at verses 5 and 6 here. And in these two verses, we will come to understand that contentment increases confidence in our Lord. In verse 5, the writer of Hebrews says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. Be content with such things as you have. And I think we can add to that and be right in doing so. Be content with whatever situation you find yourself in. Because my focus today is on our situation, our circumstances. And we could, you know, there are many avenues of this matter as it relates to contentment that we could talk about. But I just want to help us and encourage us as we deal with our present circumstances, our present situation, and help us to understand that as believers in the body of Christ, we need to be content with whatever our situation is at this point. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And as I've already said in earlier broadcasts, the Lord has not forsaken us. He is still with us. He is still providing. He is still protecting us. In this passage, we find that there are three significant words that we can highlight. Let me just highlight them real quickly for you. First is the word covetousness. That's something that we ought to really hate in our lives and make sure that we do not allow it to find a place and have no anchor in our life whatsoever. The second thing is the very word that we're talking about, and that's the word contentment that is mentioned in this verse. And that is certainly something to be sought as a virtue. And I've already called it a virtue just a few minutes ago. The third thing that we are to talk about here, uh, or we need to see, is in verse 6, where uh, the writer of Hebrews says, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. That, beloved friend, speaks of confidence. Confidence is something that we develop through experience in our Lord Jesus Christ. Six things are confidently sought with God's help, according to what Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. And he said, those things are righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. All of those things are to be a part of our lives as our confidence increases in the Lord. The third thing that I share with you is that contentment rests in the sufficiency of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said again to the Philippians in chapter 4, verse 19, one of my very favorite passages of Scripture, But my God shall supply all your need 
according to His riches in glory. According to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus, He said. I mentioned that in our introduction just a little bit earlier. And I want to remind us of that once again. Just as Paul reminded uh, the Philippian Christians there in the church, he wanted them to come to the point of understanding that our sufficiency is of God. That's what he also told the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 5. And when we recognize that our sufficiency is in God, that He will provide for our need and He will sustain us through the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, then that means that our future is certain to be secure. We don't have to worry about the future. There's no need for us to be anxious about tomorrow. Perish the thought that we be anxious about tomorrow or the next day or the next day or what's going to come next week. Let's just be thankful for what God has blessed us with today and let's be content in the way that He has provided for us today. Whatever our state, God will provide for our need and His grace will always be sufficient for each and every one of us. As I close, let me share just a few additional thoughts. The likely question for all of us at this moment would be, well, how can I, Pastor Joe, achieve contentment in my life? And I ask myself that question. How can I achieve more contentment in my life? Let me give you three things that I think are important. I'll list them real quickly for you. Number one, know that your life has been transformed by the power of God's grace in Jesus Christ. Know that you know that you know, as we sometimes say, that you have been saved by the grace of God. And I trust that all of you know that today who are watching this program. The second thing that I would say unto all of us, after we know that we know that we have been saved, is that we pray for the Holy Spirit to help us grow in confidence toward God. And as we go and grow in confidence toward God, we exercise this thought where we literally submit ourselves or, if you will, we turn our life over to the Lord each and every day. And we just yield ourselves to Him. And no matter what our circumstance, no matter what our situation, we have peace of mind in knowing that we have yielded ourselves to the Lord and we are confident that His grace will be sufficient. He will meet every need that we have. When we have done that, point one and point two, when we have taken care of those things, we know that our life has been transformed, number one, and we strive to grow in confidence toward the Lord. Then the third thing is we rest in the Lord and His provisions and we find ourselves being grateful and living with gratitude as I talked about last week on our program. Be mindful each and every day of the things that we often take for granted. Small things, little things, things like, for example, just being able to have sight, being able to smell, being able to enjoy the beauty of the creation that God has provided for us, being able to enjoy our family and our friends, being able to at least see a few people that we can see under these circumstances that are very close to us and a part of our family unit. And remember in this process what God has provided for us. And remember that what He has provided is exactly what we need. It is in His sufficiency that we have what we have and what, we, what He has seen fit to give us is indeed sufficient. What He has given me has been sufficient for me. So when you realize that, rest in Him and enjoy a much more fulfilled life going forward. Finally, I would say unto us, the invitation today is very simple. Will you ask God to help you be a more contented person? Will you pray that He help you do that right now as I lead us in our closing prayer? 
And Lord Jesus, we thank you for this lesson on contentment. It has certainly spoken to my heart. I pray that you would forgive me of my tendency to be discontented. Especially in these times that we live in, I know that I need, I need to be a more contented person. And so I pray that you will give me grace. Through the sufficiency of your grace, may you provide for me all that I stand in need of. And may you provide for the special, precious people that are watching us right now, listening to this program, watching this program, and may they rest in you as well knowing that you will provide for them. And may they be contented in knowing that your grace will be sufficient. Guide us into the upcoming week, and we will thank you for all that you do for us. We humbly ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.